How you doing, LT? How you doing, me? Good to see uh, you, man. Uh, nice to see you too, man. Nice to finally meet you too. I heard a lot about you and everything yeah. you was pushing for uh, with the bills that got passed. So, you know, and I and I. In our social media world, we don't really get an understanding of like who's pushing for us and who was the guy, who are the people that are actually signing things and making things go through to better the system. So, yeah. So if I could tell my story, uh, LT, you know, I'm from Philadelphia, four or five hundred murders a year. My my dad got killed in South Philadelphia. Uh, so you know, at the age of 18, like just the way I live from seeing murder on a daily basis, you knowing my dad got killed in the neighborhood. I always just knew in my mind I needed to carry a firearm and protect myself because that was actually necessary. My hood was like Friday the 13th every night, and that was just, that was the environment. So that's the things, the measurements, the measures I had to take to survive in those areas. So uh, I got arrested, and, and when I got arrested, uh, when I got to the police station, I had about 30 charges. And, you know, I, I didn't know what the charges was. I was 18-year-old kid. I went in front of a bell judge. He basically judged me as as if I already committed the crime. He basically said, "Oh, you pointed a gun at a Philadelphia police officer. Your bail two hundred fifty thousand. So when he said that, I tried to speak back, and they told me I could not speak back the uh, the cop that was in the room because I was trying to tell him like I ain't pointing a gun at the cop. So you know that led to me doing uh, time in prison and getting sentenced to eleven and a half to twenty three months. I think eleven years probation." So through my 11 years of probation, I want to tell you, LT, I'm from Philadelphia, like where it's kind of hard to even be an angel if you come from my background. So, you know, I, I never danced on the law. Uh, I never broke laws, especially as an adult from 18 years on out. I've been living like a, a straightforward life. And uh, through my life of just dancing on the line, because I am young and black and, and I'm not perfect, but dancing on the line of not committing crime, uh, they sent me back to prison three or four times without actually breaking a law, without actually doing anything that could uh, disrupt society. And, and you know me, I value myself so low at the time. I always grew up in the system since the age of 18. I always thought that was normal. But when I was in prison, sometimes I just couldn't sit with the fact that I was sitting with people that actually did crimes and people who didn't do crimes, you know, like the technical violators and I was a technical violator most times. Mm -hmm. You know, me, uh me, I would tell you me, I'm a monster. Like I, I try to make it through anything. I'm from North Philly, uh mm -hmm. been in South Philly my my whole life. Uh I never really looked for sympathy. I just knew I had to do what I had to do and I never thought we'd have a day like this where I could actually talk to people who are in power, officials who actually are thorough people with character. And you know, uh that technical violation thing the judge was doing with me brought me back to prison three or four times. And me, I had a different background through a, a different backing, uh, through coming to celebrity and the people that I know and my, uh, what would I say, my resources. So it was a little different for me. And I, I actually had lawyer money to actually back me up. But I always thought about the young guys and the young brothers that come up like me who don't have those things. So, mm -hmm. Uh, when I seen people come out in Philadelphia and stand up for me and march for me, that just made me know I needed to dedicate a piece of my life to helping people get back and not go through what I, I went. And, you know, once I got out, I linked with Michael Rubin, Jay, the reform group, everybody, Jessica Jackson. And, you know, the support was unbelievable how they were supporting me. So, you know, I wanted to put that on the ground and really make sure that worked for uh, the people, our people, actually. You know, black and brown people go to jail at an alarming rate. Uh, a lot of most prisons I've been at, 25% of the prisons were just technical violations. People mm -hmm. smoke weed, people using drugs, addicted to drugs. And, you know, I just always knew that wasn't right. So thousands or millions of others, just knowing that we don't have caps, that now we'll have caps on probations where people can't just take their freedom yep. at the drop of a button. I call it what I always called it. I called it death by paper. Yeah. Because we always talk about, like, if one cop kill a black man, I, I think more about the courtrooms where people get killed on paper on a daily basis. And uh, I just always kept that in the back of my mind. And the situation landed in, in my lap, I think it's God that put it in my lap, and I'm just going to own it. I always tell people I'm, I'm a remain a rapper. I'm going to remain McNeil. <laughs> I ain't going to be breaking the laws, but I'm going a, I'm to a own reform. I'm going to make sure the voice spreads as far as it can if for brothers like you
what's up everyone welcome to my channel my name is lynn from kenya east of africa and guys you're very welcome to my channel to my returning subscribers thank you very much for always coming back to support what i do i don't take your support for granted at all may god bless you anyway straight into today's commentary guys it's not every day when we hear these rappers you know uh just give testimonies of things that they have been through it's not every day when we hear them rappers giving their uh life stories and all that but i just came across this video of meek mill you all know him he's a great rapper he's loved by a lot of people and all anyway on this particular video he was just sharing a brief uh, uh life history of his and you know let's get into it he said that he grew up in philadelphia that is where he calls home that is where you know he was born raised and all that and after all that you know uh he witnessed the death of his dad while he was only 18 in the streets of philadelphia he said on this on that video he just finished watching that his dad was murdered and you know may his dad continue resting in peace it's not easy to lose a parent so may his dad continue resting in peace and may eternal peace uh shine upon him now after he said that his dad was killed he said that you know he felt so afraid because of the trauma of witnessing you know the dad you know going to the other side at a very young age and you know he had to carry a fire everywhere he went because again in this uh he, he was saying that in philadelphia those days when he was growing up it was not easy because there were a lot of gangs and all that stuff so uh, because of what he saw had happened to his dad maybe he just got worried that the same thing might happen to him and he used to carry something just to protect himself and you know amidst all those things you know being a a child being a black child also in the hood and all that stuff he was arrested and he said upon reaching the police station he got he was told there are 30 charges against him and yeah uh he said he passed all that and after uh, he even went to a bail judge and the bail judge told him that he had to pay two hundred and fifty thousand dollars mind you that's a child who had uh by that time he was a child and he had just lost a barn so uh, being told to pay two hundred and fifty thousand dollars as uh, so that he can get out you know he obviously didn't have it and he reacted and upon reacting he was told that you know you can't just talk back and all that stuff so he was put in 11 years probation and after being put in uh 11 year probation it wasn't an easy journey because remember he was not meek meal back then people didn't know him so it's not like he's going to create a go fund and people will just help him uh get money for the lawyers and everything like he literally had nothing and the parent was gone so you know he was saying that he really suffered you know being on probation again he was saying in philadelphia is not easy because he obviously had friends and maybe some of these friends do some things that are not that are not very straight so you know he said that it was not easy being on probation uh in philadelphia he even said that you know he went to jail two or three times you know he went back to jail and upon going back to jail he we uh he he they, he actually didn't go to jail because of anything again he said he went to jail you know just because of being a black child and maybe uh breaking minor minor charges uh minor minor rules and uh he witnessed that there are a lot of people in jail who are very innocent who had not committed the crimes he also said that there are those who had committed the crimes and everything and you know he was just talking to someone as you can see in the beginning of that video you just watched you know i guess the person helps people especially the black people to just uh with the with the legal issues and yeah i don't know why but that story just touched me because look at him right now you know coming out of that if mcmill came out from such a situation it truly tells that anybody can get through it because can you that was a child uh, he was still very very young 18 so he came out from nothing and look at him today he's so successful and everything now i don't know what y'all think about that story but i feel like it should encourage most of you out there who are having maybe legal issues like just look up to him like today he's meek meal back then you know he was just a boy you know who could go 
back and forth with their feds and all that stuff but sometimes you have to make tough uh decisions so that you can live your life with peace look at him right now i don't see him with dramas i don't see him with fed issues and all that stuff he really learned from that so i don't know what these uh that story of his just maybe go ahead in the comment section tell me what's the lesson you learned from that story and also to everybody who's going through legal issues i pray for you may god bless you may god be with you i know it's not easy but i know with consistency and work and you know putting god first in everything you'll go through it that's all for now guys i'll update you with more news